Hi, I'm Anita from the blog Whispering Pines Homestead. Nine years ago, we filmed our very first video here with my mom in the kitchen making her delicious homemade biscuits. She is back today and she is going to share about canning and preserving and growing up here in the Appalachian Mountains and you do not want to miss it. So let's go inside. I'm so excited to have you here and I know everybody is looking forward to hearing you just talk about your life growing up here and how your life really has always been centered around being self-sufficient. Well, bless your heart, honey. Um, I like to reminisce, and sometimes it, it makes me happy, and sometimes it makes me sad because my mother and daddy are gone. Uh, but I go back to uh, how I grew up. I was born in the mountains of western North Carolina in what is now the Great Smoky Mountains in a place called Proctor before Fontana Dam. My daddy was there in the CCC camp, and I have his papers from uh, when he uh, went into the CC camp. He was a tall man, about six feet, a little over six feet. He went into the CCC camp, weighed 130 pounds, scrawny. Mother, of course, was from Hazel Creek. She lived there, and that's where she met Daddy in the CCC camp. But they had been through the Great Depression together, and uh, they'd been hungry. Uh, Daddy said down in Madison County, the hills were so rocky that it just, uh, they couldn't hardly grow anything. And he was determined that his children would have some land where they'd never be hungry again. And uh, he had joined the, the Army in 1943. Early, well, 19, uh, early 1943. I was born on February the 1st of 1943. <clears throat> Apparently, they didn't have a flashlight. They didn't have a lantern. They didn't have anything. And Daddy said it was the darkest night he had ever seen when he walked down the road to try to get the doctor to come for my birth. And the doctor had told him not to come to the back door to be sure that he came to the front. And we found out later that the nurse was selling drugs oh, <laughs> at the back door. Nevertheless, a week or so later, my daddy had to leave, and we didn't see him again till I was going on three years old. When he came home from the service, uh, they... Um, uh, had three other children, and uh, they looked for land for years. I'm telling you, I remember when we had literally, you didn't have refrigerators. You barely had electricity in one bare light bulb in the ceiling. The water, we had running water, but we did not have any hot water. You had to heat it, whatever you were going to use. And if you're going to eat dinner, you had to have a wash pan sitting on that old wood stove mm -hmm. uh, heating the water. And they had bought this, what we call the home place, when I was about nine. And Daddy grew tomatoes. They grew all kinds of crops. And we canned and stored everything that we were going to eat for the winter. We had a good cellar, can house cellar, whatever you want to call it. We stored our potatoes. That's what country people do. You store your potatoes in that. And uh, we had onions that you have to have those tied up where it's good and dry and they won't get wet. And when we would get off the school bus about a half a mile from the house, We'd get off the school bus in the afternoon. We could smell whatever Mother had cooking. She always had something on. It might have been a pot of vegetable soup uh, and cornbread. The next day, it would have been what we call soupy taters and what now people call uh, 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 potato soup. Mm -hmm. But back then, it was soupy taters and cornbread. And maybe on the weekends, Mother might kill a couple of pullets that's uh, smaller than a hen because they had they always raised their chickens, and we'd have those little pullets for Sunday dinner. And the little pulley bun be so small you wouldn't hardly get but a bite. But I'm telling you, they were so good. Back when um, I guess I must have been about um, ten or twelve, uh, Mother's uncle by marriage had a, a store on Eagle's Nest, right down by the creek. It was called Eagle's Nest Grocery. And uh, he finally bought a new ice cream freezer. And Daddy bought that old ice cream freezer with the doors that flopped open on the top. And uh, so we had a, we had a, a, a cow. They killed a, a steer and put it in that. And those were the best. Oh, the best hamburgers oh, yeah. you ever tasted. We didn't have light bread, what mm -hmm. I call light bread. 
Mother always made good biscuits and uh, good cornbread, so I don't remember what mm-hmm. we ate those hamburgers on, mm-hmm. if they bought some buns or what. But And, of course, now I make all kinds of, of bread. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe that was bread in me that I needed to learn how to make mm-hmm. bread. But um, <clears throat> those were so good. We had everything. Mother and Daddy grew everything, and they gave so much away to people in need. Mm -hmm. And I've seen them take the last dollar they had and give to somebody who needed their lights turned on and and take this canned stuff and give it to Mm -hmm. them. And Mother, when she was um, canning, I started at the age of about nine on that old wood stove, and she had a good pressure canner. And it had a gauge on it, but my daddy was scared to death of those canners, but mother would sit right there, and the wood stove heats the way it wants to. <laughs> you have to have enough heat to to keep it the keep the pressure up, but you get too much, it'll go up too high, and I've seen mother just barely slide that canner across the stove just a little bit, real easy, till the heat would go down a little bit when the pressure was going up, and then she'd slowly push it back over. If she had a cake in the stove, she had it where she could prop the oven open just a little bit. She had a little little piece of wood she would thin. She could put in the door to hold it open so the cake wouldn't overcook because the stove had a gauge on it back then, and I sure wish I had that mm-hmm. old stove. We didn't get a, even get a refrigerator till I was about six. We lived up way out in the sticks up on Pigeon River, and I would go with Daddy to the ice plant to get the ice, and I remember them taking those big old prongs and Mm -hmm. picking that ice up, and I don't know how he got it up to the house. I don't remember, unless he carried it on his back. But I know that we got a refrigerator while we lived there, a Frigidaire, and we had that beautiful old ice box. (laughs) Anyway, when they got the refrigerator, they had to uh, uh, bring it up on a sled. Oh, wow. And my brother, was born when we lived up there, my youngest brother. In January, they brought him and mother up there on a sled. They brought them home on a sled. So I go way, 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 way back. The peach man would come, a truckload of peaches, every every summer, and they were about $2 a bushel. Now, I'm talking about the big mm-hmm. bushel baskets. And mother always got a couple of bushel. And Mamma Lena would be there, and we'd be peeling them peaches. But the the peach man, once they brought the peaches, Mother bought them, they would come up and say, will you let us have something to eat? We didn't have any restaurants Mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. And she would fix whatever she had. She'd tell them to sit on the front porch, and she would shut the door, go in and heat up whatever soup or whatever she'd had and take it out and feed them, and they would go on their way. Mm -hmm. So we really had a... I tell you, we had a life that Mm -hmm. people now could not understand Mm -hmm. and would never know how to live the way we did. Chan brought some apples to me this summer, and I was really excited to find out that they had come off the trees that Papaw had planted so many years ago. Well, Chan is my nephew, and he lives on the home place now where I was when we were doing all this canning. I was just a girl, and Daddy worked at the rubber plant, which later became Daco. But it was the rubber plant then. And in order for him to uh, afford the trees, mm-hmm. he sold the trees from Stark. He had a, a, some kind of an agreement with Stark Brothers where he would sell the trees and he earned so many trees. So that's how we got all those apple trees. We had a cherry tree that failed, but the birds usually got them cherries. And uh, we had oh, we had uh, uh, plum trees. We had grapevines. We had everything because of my mother and daddy and how hard they worked and because they were trying to make plans for their children as I've tried to do for my children. That's why I can so much now, even though I'm I'm right now 80 years old and pretty much broke down, but I still, I can lean on the countertop and can and can and can, and I do somewhere around 800 cans a year of all, mostly vegetables and stuff. So growing your own food <clears throat> and preserving it is a way of life. It's not, a, it's a right. trendy thing right now. A <clears throat> lot of people are doing it because, um, you know, I think people are trying to learn things that skills that people had forgotten right. along the way. So they're trying to learn. And it's it's not easy. It's a lot of hard no. work. It's a way of life, honey. 
And I think it's using what you have, what you grow, or even what people offer you. I was so happy to have the apples that Uncle Tommy and Chan offered me, because we really do enjoy those throughout the year. I basically just cook them down with a little bit of water, no sugar, and then I put them in pint jars. We love to open up a jar, heat them up with just a little sprinkle of cinnamon, and it's a really healthy and natural snack through the winter, and we really do enjoy just having those. And it's using what you have, not letting anything go to waste. And you're right, it is a way of life. I have some footage, Mother, of you canning green beans, which here, I think green beans are really a staple. And I feel like if we had nothing else to eat, we could live on green beans. I believe you could live off that in the wintertime because your green beans has the green vegetable and it also has the bean, which has so much protein in it. And so we always make sure that we have plenty of green beans. Here we are packing them in the jar. I put them in and I do it, stick them in by hand because I don't want any extra water in there. I kind of drain them as I do that and I pack them down as I go. And then you'll see me putting what's left, the shellies, on top, trying to even those out with all the jars. Now we're pouring the hot water, boiling water, into each jar. I don't put the, the salt in until we have... Um, uh, loosened all the beans and gotten all the air out. And that's the hardest thing that I hate to do with mm -hmm. the beans is having to, to do that because my arm is not strong. One teaspoon of salt into each quart. And then we're off to the lids that I have got in uh, hot water, not necessarily boiling, but really hot simmering water. Even though they tell you you don't have to do it anymore, I believe they work better that way. Put the rings on fingertip tight. And then off they go into the pressure canner, and that's it. So what are some of the foods that y'all would grow and then put up for the winter? Well, we grew tomatoes to sell, uh, oh, okay. acres of them. Mm -hmm. And you had to, we had to crawl through because that star on the bottom in the center of that tomato had to just barely be turning before we could pull it. And some years were good, some were bad. But we always grew tomatoes. We grew uh, uh, green beans and uh, all kinds of shellies. We grew um, uh, anything that you might use in soups. Mm -hmm. We grew corn. And my brother to this day still grows the field corn that uh, he shells and mm -hmm. has it ground into fresh mm -hmm. corn meal. And I have quite a bit over there in my freezer. And uh, it, there's no taste like that, mm -hmm. like that. And I saw the recipe the other day that where my daddy, when he got to where he wasn't able to go, and we were taking meals to him. He wanted me to make his cornbread a certain way with that cornmeal, which I did. But uh, yes, we know how to survive because that's how we learned mm -hmm. that. And it's it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. right. I had I used to have over a half acre of garden mm -hmm. right up here, and I've had years that I grew like twenty mm -hmm. bushel of green beans, and I can most mm -hmm. of them. So if somebody is new to this and they're trying to start a garden, they want to start preserving, but they don't know where to start. What would you recommend they start with? I, I always believe that you've got to have vegetables that you eat. Mm -hmm. I see people yes, with all yes. this canned stuff mm -hmm. on the shelf that's pickles and pickles and pickles and pickles <laughs> right. and, and uh, mm -hmm. sauces and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's not going to provide a family right. with a meal. Right. We mm -hmm. like to have potatoes, yes. mm -hmm. bean, green beans or, or mm -hmm. dried beans, pintos, whatever. We always made kraut. Mm -hmm. I have mother's old crock, and I always make my kraut the old-time way. It's fermented uh, in the pot. Um, mother and daddy always grew beets, and uh, I like mm -hmm. to have plenty of tomatoes so I can make plenty of tomato soup. Mm -hmm. And I make some uh, uh, tomato sauce and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. and, and we've always made uh, all kinds of pickles, mm -hmm. spaghetti sauce, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. I don't do a lot of meats. But I do uh, uh, pork sausage mm -hmm. patties, and I oh, do uh, <laughs> I do hot dog chili, mm -hmm. and I've done some um, uh, chili beans and stuff like that. I've canned a lot of corn. I do not can it by the book, and it's so good the grandchildren eat it right out mm -hmm. of the jar. 
Uh, and I keep that when I can. It's a certain kind of corn. It's very crunchy, and it's crunchy in my soups and salads and things like that. So I have stuff. I try to plan for the for the whole winter. You've learned to use a pressure canner. Boy, I'm so proud of you. Woo, I am. And all of those squash that you canned and those casseroles you made, my goodness. Oh, I'd like to have another one. I will definitely make more. As you know, that summer squash was just kind of a surprise in the garden, and it's been a prolific producer, so I have been doing everything I possibly could with it. I've made a lot of squash casseroles and some zucchini lasagna. I've roasted them with some of your homegrown onions, and we have really just enjoyed them. I've also been freezing all I could get in the freezer, but I remember that you used to can the summer squash all the time, so... I actually went by the directions in the 1994 Ball Blue Book, and I actually made a few adjustments after trying the first couple runs to the last run, and I just raw packed them, and they turned out a lot better. And again, it's it's about not letting anything go to waste. I was going to say about the corn and, and b- going by the book, I think it's really important. Everybody... A lot of people who were new want to just take the book and go buy the book. And I have learned that you need somebody who knows, who's done it, who has experience, because you can't just look at the book and find out everything you need to know. I'm the kind of person who has (laughs) a lot of questions, and they're they're not in the book. So thank goodness I have you to to call up every five minutes and say, what do I do about this? Or Because there are a lot of variables I don't think people think about. So uh, my advice to somebody trying it now starting out would be not just to get the best. Have somebody you can trust. Have somebody you can trust who knows what they're doing. You know, I do lots of jams, strawberry, mm-hmm. blackberry, grape, and and all of those. Uh, and and I don't uh, do things exactly by the book, but I've never had anybody get sick. <laughs> so, um, and but you don't want anybody that's so far out that they're going to get you way off. Right. And have you make somebody sick. Thank you so much, Mother, for coming. I'm so glad that you were able to share some of these things with us. She has so much wisdom to share, and I will definitely bring her back, and we will talk more. But first, we're going to get into the fall videos, and I'm going to share some fall decorating really soon. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, and make sure you like this video, because you do not want to miss what we have coming up. Thank you so much.